If you're brand new to using Ableton Live, I wanna show you as quickly as possible how you can EQ your sounds in Ableton Live and get your audio sounding exactly the way you want it using the EQs built into Ableton Live. Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna use a project that I'm currently working on with my kids. We are recording some Christmas songs and, and this one in particular, we're testing on auto-tune. So it's highly auto-tuned, but that's just because I wanted to and it's fun. So here's uh, kind of our default vocal that my what son sang. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh bell song tonight. So obviously very incredibly passionate performance, but what I wanna do is use uh, the EQ to trim out some of the troublesome frequencies and maybe potentially boost some other ones. So first let's talk about where to find EQs in Ableton Live. Let's go over here to the left-hand side of our screen to what's called Live's browser. We're gonna click this show hide button and I wanna go to the audio effects. And I wanna show you something that I typically don't do, but I think is gonna be beneficial to you if you're getting started. So with the audio effects portion of the browser open, I want you to right click here in the list of all the effects and I want you to choose group and folder. What this is gonna do is this is gonna group all your audio effects together based on type. So right now you can see audio effects and you see a folder that says EQ and filters. This is gonna be the fastest way you, for you to find the EQs in Ableton Live to see what they are. So let's dive in and see what they are. So we open this up, we see we have a few different ones. We have auto filter, which is a, a form of EQ. We can filter out frequencies, which is great, but we're not gonna use that for this video. We have channel EQ, we have EQ8 and EQ3. Now with three different options for EQ, technically four if we include auto filter, which one should we use? Well, it all depends on your context and what you're hoping to do. EQ3 is best to think about as kind of a DJ EQ. So it's a three band EQ. If you think of a DJ um, uh, with decks and they typically have three bands of EQ so they can do filter sweeps and they can drop to just have the mids going and do all sorts of things. It's very dead simple. It's very just uh, simple. That's the best way to look at it, right? Three knobs, we can change where the cutoff is for the frequency, um, but it's probably not where you want to start with what you're doing, okay? The step up from EQ3 is EQ8, and if I double click to load that on my track here, you'll see that we have eight bands of EQ, and we can choose um, how these function, we can choose what frequency, uh, we can choose what type of filter we're choosing here to, to kind of cut out. Um, this is where I think most of us will start, but there's another type of EQ that I wanna point out here. Uh, this is channel EQ, and if I double click to load this, Channel EQ is just a real kind of simple way to get started. I think of this as like a channel strip on a console. If I'm recording into an analog console, I'm gonna have low, mid, high, I'm gonna have the ability to just carve out those simple frequencies. You get a nice little spectrum display to see on, uh, on the uh, kind of input there. This to me is like the first level of EQ cuts and then EQ8 is more granular, not meaning granular in synthesis, but a little more detailed kind of uh, exploration of EQ. So I think to start, you know, channel EQ is a real simple way to get started, but I think EQ8 is the best one to explore to kind of have fun with. So let's use that for this. So I'm gonna double click to load EQ8 here on my track. Now, how do we actually get started with EQ? This is a trick I learned um, when it came to uh, running front of house and, and really quickly in the heat of a moment where you're doing a sound check uh, to figure out how do I make this vocal sound better? Um, some people have really great ears and they hear a frequency and they go, oh, that's what it is. But for the rest of us that are mere mortals, here's a really fun tip to try to figure out where those troublesome frequencies are. So I'm gonna play this back. Whoa. And I'm gonna just grab one of these and as it's playing, I'm gonna actually boost this and find the frequencies that just stick out to me that I don't think are great. Okay, so let's play this back and let's boost. On is to ride and sing a slip. Okay, so that sounds a little um, uh, muddy. It sounds like it, things are getting in the way. So what I'm gonna do is just take this and instead of boosting it, I'm gonna go to the gain here and I'm just gonna drop this down, okay? So now let's listen and that's really extreme. Let's go extreme with it. Okay. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh bell song tonight. Okay, so I could go and let's find, see if we find what another fun frequency. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh bell song tonight. Oh, gee. Okay, so now depending on the type of content, depends on the moves you're going to make. Um, you're most likely gonna find some trouble spots. You're going to cut those spots out. You may find some spots that you boost, but here's two pro tips when it comes to EQing in Ableton Live, because whatever your EQing is gonna depend on the moves you make. Do I do this? Do I do that? Um, uh, but here's kind of a pro tip that I suggest when it comes to EQing. Uh, number one, don't do what I did here. Uh, when I first started using EQ, I tended to overdo it. You can see I overdid it, granted on purpose for this, 
with this. Um, I, I can go and just kind of smooth this out and bring some of this back, but then cut some of that. Uh, I've found uh, my friends that are really good, that have great ears, that are mix, uh, great mix engineers, they just make subtle cuts. They don't tend to do surgical cuts unless there's something drastically wrong with the content. And, and sometimes that's the case and it calls for a surgical cut. Um, but a lot of times it's just a real subtle kind of fix. You know, maybe bring that down a little bit. The other thing I've found that, that uh, my friends that are really good that do this do is they tend to prefer cuts to boost. Now a default for me when I'm working with vocals is I tend to boost the high end a little bit to get it to cut through. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But instead of going, ooh, I really like this, what my friends that are really good at EQing do is they say, instead of doing this, I'm going to cut around it. So maybe I'll cut a little bit of this and I'll cut a little bit of that, which is effectively, if you can see, look what I did. I effectively boosted this by cutting those, okay? So try to prefer cuts to boost, okay? Now, I didn't get very technical with EQ8. Um, I could go in and show you, okay, I could take this and move this to a low pass filter and you can see how this changes, how we EQ. Because what I want you to do now is just drop EQ8 on to an audio track, to a MIDI track, and just start exploring. Start moving this around to find the frequency, to find the cue, to say, do I want this, um, uh, do I want to boost this? Do I want to go to something like this to make this super wide, to make it super narrow, to drop the gain, to raise the gain? Um, experiment with the controls here to see what you can get. And I think that's the best way to use EQ as opposed to thinking I'm very much in a checklist form. I know a lot of people that will search and Google, what's the best EQ for vocals? How to EQ vocals? And I think the best way to do it is to use your ear and just to explore. And again, follow those two principles I share, prefer, prefer cuts to boost, and then uh, don't go surgical, just make subtle changes as opposed to drastic changes. Now, one of the other things you can do uh, to learn how to use Ableton Live really, really well is subscribe to this channel every single day at 10 a.m. Central. I post a brand new tutorial, primarily about performing on stage, but Tuesdays I dedicate to content like this, troubleshooting, getting started with Ableton Live. If you enjoy content like this, subscribe, enable the bell icon, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.